From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting the most recent video by Islamic State militants draws U.S. criticism. U.S. President Barack Obama has strongly condemned the brutal murder of a Japanese hostage held by Islamic State militants and vowed Washington and its allies will bring the perpetrators to justice. Mr. Obama's statement Saturday came hours after a video showed one of the Japanese hostages, journalist Kenji Goto, holding up photos appearing to show beheaded co-captive Haruna Yukawa. The Islamic State group, which now controls a third of both Syria and Iraq, had threatened Tuesday to behead the hostages within 72 hours unless it received a $200 million ransom. The militants no longer want money and are instead demanding the release of Sajida al-Rishawi, a female suicide bomber candidate imprisoned in Jordan. Pro-Russian rebels have launched an offensive on the key Ukrainian port city of Mariupol. In an escalation, the European Union foreign policy chief warns could lead to a further grave deterioration of EU-Russian relations. Alexander Chochunov, the Ukraine's National Defense Council, says the rebels shelled Mariupol and innocent citizens, and it was not an accident. The Ukrainian authorities say at least 30 people were killed Saturday when rockets hit a residential area of Mariupol. Officials in Britain say a nurse stricken with the deadly Ebola virus has made a full recovery and been released from a London-area hospital. Pauline Kafferkey was the first person diagnosed with the disease on British soil. She was admitted to the Royal Free Hospital in North London December 30th. More on these stories at voanews.com. This is VOA News. Thousands of Yemenis marched in protest Saturday against the Shiite rebel Houthi group two days after... Uh, two days after the resignation of the president and the government. Witnesses say demonstrators marched from a square near Sana'a University toward what had been the homes of the country's leaders in the capital city. On Friday, senior U.S. security officials said U.S. counterterrorism operations have been suspended in Yemen following the collapse of the U.S.-backed government. Sources close to the situation said the resignations of Yemeni President Abu Mansour Hadi and the government of Prime Minister Khaled Baha has left U.S. anti-terror operations in the country paralyzed. From London, VOA's Henry Ridgewell has more on the situation. The well-armed rebels patrolling the streets say they are not seeking conflict. Murad Mohammed is one of them. He says the Houthis are here to serve the Yemeni people and provide security and safety to serve all the people. The president's resignation, however, has left a dangerous power vacuum, says Yemen specialist Kate Nevins of the conflict prevention group Safer World. The Houthis are actually unlikely to want full administrative power themselves. Um, I think they are unlikely to want to be held accountable as a formal government. The Houthis make up around a third of the Yemeni population. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. World leaders are arriving in Saudi Arabia to pay respects following the death of King Abdullah. U.S. President Barack Obama is cutting short a visit to India to fly to the Sunni-ruled kingdom on Tuesday. Others arriving to offer condolences and meet the new king include Britain's Prince Charles and Prime Minister David David Cameron. President Obama, in the meantime, is visiting India to hold talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on climate change and economic ties. Mr. Obama becomes the first U.S. president to attend India's Republic Ceremony on January 26th, which marks the day India's constitution went into effect in 1950. President Obama says it's time to do more to restore the link between hard work and growing opportunity for every American. In his weekly address Saturday, the president reiterated economic points he made in his State of the Union address last Tuesday, including tax reform. And we can afford to do these things by closing loopholes in our tax code that stack the decks for special interests in the super rich and against responsible companies and the middle class. Police in the U.S. city of Atlanta were searching Saturday for explosives on two jetliners at the city's main airport after authorities received what they determined to be credible bomb threats. Posted on Twitter. I'm Vincent Bruce in Washington. That's the latest world news from BOA.